Oh, hi, I'm back. No, no, I'm not becoming a keyboard channel. Even though that would be pretty cool. Greetings, 565 here. And this is my in-game keyboard. Lubed porcelain blue switches, a wooden case, pink keycaps, all wrapped up in a 60% size. It's perfect for me, and taking the time out of my week to build this keyboard was well worth it. But it wasn't without its unique hiccups. Here's what went right and what went wrong. My PCB of choice was the KBD Fans DZ60 due to its cheap price and lack of RGB. My mom provided me with a set of tweezers that I was able to test the PCB with. What made these tweezers special was that they had a flat tip on one end and a pointed tip on the other, which turned out to be more useful than I thought. Nothing was faulty with the board, so it's time for me to move on to the most grueling part of the build, modding the switches. For context, I had already modded 36 keys, but my GoPro died, so here's only the second set. My switches of choice were the Texi Porcelain Blues, a vague switch I found in search of Bobo U40s. Why'd I choose them? Because they sounded great, and they were cheap. After getting all my bits and pieces organized, I started lubricating. I lubed the rails and the leaf bumps on the bottom housing, both sides of the spring, manually, all around the stem and the two little divots in the upper housing of the switch. I found that the key, pun intended, to separating the switches was to push it down into the separator and hold on to the top and pull that off. This was vastly quicker than shoving it into the separator, taking the switch out, and then trying to pry it apart. Despite the mind-numbing repetitiveness, I enjoyed modding my switches. Just one tip for future keyboard builders, make sure to fully click the housings of the switch together because if they're not fully clicked together, you will have a lot of trouble installing them onto the plate later. Lubing the stabilizers was easy, clipping them was not. I would highly recommend some tool like a nail clipper, but not curved, because approaching the legs from the side with my cuticle cutter was not easy. Despite this, it got the job done. I then lubed the insides of the stab housings as well as the wires. However, I did something really stupid when installing the stabs. So you see how the plate has a specific L-shaped slot for the enter key? For some reason, I ignored that and repeatedly tried to install my stabs along the guide of an upside down plate. I was relieved and also very embarrassed when I figured out what I was doing. On to the fun part. I was using a solder iron my mom had got me for Easter as well as the actual solder that came with that kit, so I wasn't sure you know, what kind of quality to expect from it. However, it worked great. Soldering was my favorite part of the process by far, so it was a bummer that it was the shortest part of the build. By the way, a little USB fan works great to move fumes away. I was soldering at around 350 degrees celsius and I was slightly concerned about damaging the PCB, but that never happened. During testing I found that the escape and Z keys were broken, simply due to the fact that there was not enough solder on the pad, and that was an easy fix. Installation into the case was easy as well, because my mom had provided me with a small set of jewelry tools. So these keycaps broke my keyboard. Sorta. Of. The, you know the little part of the keycap that goes onto the stem of the switch? Well that is so tight that it managed to break my stabilizers when I tried to remove the keys like the shift key, the enter key, the backspace, uh, right shift, and thankfully not the spacebar. So that was a cluster to try to fix but I was able to fix it by jamming one of the jewelry tools in between the plate and the PCB and wiggling it and try to pop this try to pop the wire of the stabilizer back into the housing but that doesn't stop this keycap set from looking good. I got this set for my friend as a birthday surprise and they turned out fantastic both on my old board and on this one. This particular set sounds fantastic as well and they are quite thick for the price. Overall, I love this keyboard. Sure, the stabilizers are a bit wonky and not all the keys are straight, but it sounds good, looks good, and feels good.